Hello everybody and a good day to you all today. I am talking about Pun the Preacher. Oh. Preacher of Chiefs number three, episode number episode number four, The Tombs, episode directed by Wayne Yip. And here we have Jesse trying to survive in Angelville. Does he want to be there? Does he doesn't know how to get out right now because he doesn't have his full powers because because Earl Star and him still had part of his soul. And so he's trying to work the system out the best way he knows how. I mean he's tried to save Castley to no avail because Cassidy is so got in his head that him and Tulip are going to be a couple are going to be a thing that he's going to do anything to make that happen. He even makes the deal with um, Jesse's grandma to make some, some kind of love potion so she can make Tulip fall in love with her. And he almost uses this episode too because he got in because they slept together that one time. And the thing is though when Tulip slept with him she had no feelings to it at all she just did it. Help her get her anger out, help her get her frustrations out. She just used them for that moment. And that to him, oh, that's the best thing that ever happened to him. They're in love. They're going to become a couple. And, and he's just like, no, 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 son, no. And you got Cassidy, Jesse, who's op who opened up to Cassidy saying, dude, we're, we're, I'm, you're my friend. I'm sorry. I put you through this stuff. Let's put this together. But you have to get out of here because if you don't, they will kill you. They will kill you. I'm trying to save your life. And so, but Cassie don't want to listen. And, and then you, you start to see what, how Jesse deal with certain, how he deal with people who he care about and how he protects them. And you see how he is when you start to see how he is from a young man to he is now. And the, and the way that Jesse protects people he cares about is he 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 acts meaning to them. Because it shows him, it shows an old girlfriend Sabina who, who's who's mad on boy, and it shows their relationship. And Jesse had feelings for her. He cares about her. And then the TC told him that a pretty girl like that won't be won't, won't su su survive a place like this. And he knew that what that meant. He knew if they stayed together, somehow in some way, his grandma probably going to end up killing her. So the only way he can make her stay safe and keep her away was to treat her like crap. The only thing I don't, I don't just, just uh, think could think of because if he treats her like crap, she gets so pissed off she will stay away. But that caused more problems. It made her brother get upset and made her brother go after Jesse, which caused Jesse to well, kill her brother, which made her even more upset. And then you got Cat, you got um Cassidy, who he's tr been trying to save for the for the last couple episodes. And so now, so he, for, he, so he forced him to pretty much put him in the tombs and then practically cut him up and stab him half to death just to make sure he could, he'll go away. But the only person who saw all through that was Tula. Because he yelled at her, told her what the, how she don't care about her and all that stuff like that. And you can see it in Tula's eyes that she said just, okay, I understand. I love you too. Yeah, I know, I know, I know what you're doing. Like I, know, I know, I see, see exactly what you're doing. You're not being mean. You're trying to protect me, but I don't need you to protect me. Just tell me what's going on, and I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna leave you. We're in this together, thick and thin, and that just shows how much they love each other and how much Tulip understands him. Because everybody else, they took, it took it as. Uh, oh, he's, he's, he's just mean or he's nasty. Even Cassidy, who, who he tried to become friends with, took it the wrong way. But Tulip, she saw all through that. And she saw the man who he really is. She saw what he actually was doing. And she, and she still loved him. Because Jesse's not perfect. He does make mistakes. I mean, his, his idea of protecting people is a little messed up. But that's the only thing he knows. His family's really messed up. And they had messed him up for his whole entire life. And so... That's how he deal with things. And Tulo had been through some stuff too. That's that what makes him. That's what makes their relationship so close and so strong. Even when they were in the car together with his old girlfriend, and she was hearing his story, she even she said, "No, that's not my Jesse. No, that's not that's not Jesse. That's not Jesse." And I like how this, I like how this how, how this episode showed things from both perspectives. It showed things, it showed things from like Madam Boy perspective, what was going on. And you actually saw the actual world truth what actually actually went down. And it was oh, because this world that, that that Jesse's living in right now in Angelville is not good for him. It's terrible. That's one reason why he ran away the first time. 
I mean, yeah, they got his mom killed. And slowly but surely, he will lose himself in this world. Something he does not want to do. He's fighting against it ever since. Ever, ever since. He's been there. I mean, if things would have worked out better, he managed to get his soul back. Well, things that is what it is. But also in this episode, something fantastic happened. The Santa Killers makes an appearance. He's in hell. And then he has a, has a meeting with the devil. What? And he's the devil in the traditional sense. He's red. He has horns. He has the, the, the clothing hooves and all that stuff like that. He looks like a freaking satyr. But hey, that's how they want to make him. And, and the thing is, though, the devil hires the, the devil hires the Santa Killers to go to pretty much get um, um, Art's face and Hitler. Because they escaped from hell. So he wants them back. So he wants to bring them back alive. But, and, and he makes a deal with them. He says, you bring them back alive, I'll let you have the preacher. You can kill the preacher all day long. The interesting part is, Sandra Killers was getting whipped and beaten by the angel of death. Nothing. He didn't let out a scream. He let out a pain. You can even see in her face, like, Dag, what I got to do to hurt you? Dag nabbit, dude. Um, she, like, she's beating everything. She's beating everything she got into it. Everything she had into it. And nothing. He, man, his, his back was just ripped to shreds. I mean, back down to the freaking bone. You actually saw his bones. And, and, and yet, he shrugged it off. Put, Kept on walking and said, I got my mission. I'm going to go out and do it. This just shows how much of a tough person he is. He's the, pretty much a, a Terminator. He has a mission in his head. He has a goal he wants to achieve. And nothing, I don't care who it is, not even the devil himself, is going to stop him getting there. But it was, it, was, it was actually a fun scene to watch from the devil. And Satan was played by Jason Douglas. And I liked his performance. It was very funny. It, it was very funny, very interesting and fun to watch. Because... It's really fun, fun to watch. The angel does. She didn't say anything, but I just watching them in the room together. I, I really, didn't, I didn't enjoy that. I didn't think we actually see, actually see the devil in this in, in any of this show. I mean, we have seen God, so might, might as well see the devil. And he did make. He, and God made an appearance in this episode too. That's a little spark of minor one. Just checking in on Tula to see what she's doing. I still don't know. I don't understand why he dressed up, dressed up like a, a dog doing sex stuff, but whatever. But anyhow, another great episode. This, this show just keeps blowing my mind every time I watch it. I mean, it just... I, every time I think I'm going to do something, like something, something crazy, it, it shows me it could go even crazier. I mean, because it, it has a funny moments in there, too. I mean, there's a scene between um, um, Jesse and, and, and Cassidy. When Je and Cassidy, I'm trying to... Jesse was trying to ship, um, ship Ca um, um, Cassidy off inside a, inside a mailbox. And so <laughs> he was all cut up, all the little pieces. And, and that little conversation, that argument inside the box, which I thought was kind of funny. And watching the guy... Who was um trying? Who, who, who was at the place they were milling off at? And watch his response to to the to the to, to the mess that they made it was also was also hilarious. And also the scene between the Santa Rock Killers and the and Satan, I, I actually enjoyed that too. This show made me like Satan on the show. It's just it's so weird. It's so weird how the show makes you, makes you do. But I actually did like I actually enjoyed watching Satan on the show. So funny. So leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this episode of um the preacher. If you haven't watched it, check it out for yourself. Hopefully when you watch it, you will enjoy and fun watching it too. So give my channel a big like, thumbs up, boop, and subscribe to my channel and share. I would appreciate it. Also, hit, hit the little bell at the bottom to notify if you make a video. Like I always say, in my dreams and in my life, I am the Ninja Rabbit. Uh, peace out, uh, people.